1920 Stanley Cup Finals The 1920 Stanley Cup Finals was contested by the National Hockey League NHL champion, Ottawa Senators and the Pacific Coast Hockey Association Pichot champion Seattle Metropolitans. The Senators won the series by three games to two in the best of five game series. Although all of the games for the series were scheduled to be played at the arena in Ottawa, unseasonably warm weather and poor ice conditions forced the last two contests to be played on the artificial ice at Toronto's Arena Gardens. This would be the last Stanley Cup Finals appearance for a team based on the west coast of the United States until the 1993 Stanley Cup Finals. It is the last Finals appearance by a Seattle-based team to date. Paths to the Finals The Senators captured the 1919-20 NHL title after they won both halves of the regular season, thus eliminating the need for a league championship playoff. Meanwhile, Seattle finished the 1919-20 Peach regular season in first place with a 12-10 record, but had to defeat the second-place Vancouver Millionaires in a two-game total goals championship series, 7-3, to win the Peach title. The location of the series was under dispute. As the 1919 series was not completed, the Peach wanted the 1920 series to take place out west. The NHL opposed the idea. The Picho proposed playing the series in Winnipeg, but this was still not agreed to by the NHL. While the dispute continued, the schedules for both leagues was allowed to drag out, leading to a late starting date for the finals. Game Summaries Seattle's green, red, and white uniforms looked almost alike to Ottawa's black, red, and white uniforms. The Senators agreed to play in white sweaters. The rules alternated for each game, starting with Eastern rules. The puck was dropped for the first game of the series by Stanley Cup trustee William Farren to the center's Frank Nyber and Frank Foyston. The ice became soft and pools of water developed. Foyston scored two goals in the first period to put Seattle ahead 2-0. Nyber scored on a shot that ricocheted off Morris of Seattle with 40 seconds to play in the second period. Nyber tied it at the 10-minute mark of the third period. Jack Darrock scored the game-winning goal with four minutes to play on an assist from Eddie Gerrard. Vancouver Mayor Robert Gale dropped the puck to start Game 2, played under seven-man Pichot rules. Goaltender Clint Benedict led the Senators to a 3-0 shootout win. Ice conditions were again wet. Darrock scored at the 14-minute mark of the first period. In the third, Gerard stick handled in and scored after six minutes. Nyber finished the scoring with his third goal of the series with one minute to play. Seattle won game 3-3-1 three, three, in a game notable for having no penalties called. Seattle outplayed Ottawa but the score was kept close by Benedict. The first goal was scored at five minutes of the first by George Boucher to put Ottawa ahead 1-0. Riley of Seattle scored to tie the game with two minutes to play in the first. Seattle took the lead on a goal by Foyston, after a steal by Walker from Darog. The final goal was scored by Ricky on another setup by Walker. By consensus of league and team officials, the series was shifted to Toronto because of Ottawa's slushy ice conditions. The Ottawa arena did not have artificial ice. In game four, Foyston scored after three minutes to give the Mets a lead, which they did not relinquish. Rose scored at the eight-minute mark to put the Mets ahead 20. In the second period, Nyber scored after two minutes to draw Ottawa close. At the 6.55 mark, Walker scored on a backhand to put Seattle again two goals ahead before Nyber scored his second to make the score 3-2 after two periods. Seattle scored twice in the third to win the game 5-2 and even the series. In the fifth game, Rose scored after 10 minutes to put Seattle ahead 1-0, but Ottawa scored the next six to win the game 6-1. Boucher scored four minutes after Rowe to tie the score after one period. The score remained 1-1 after two periods. Darrow then scored after five minutes of the third to put Ottawa ahead. Gerard stick handled through the Seattle team to put Ottawa ahead 3-1 three, three minutes later. Darrow then scored twice within a minute to record a hat trick. 
Niver scored to finish the scoring. Seattle forward Frank Foyston had high praise for the Ottawa team after the series had concluded, and gave credit to all of Frank Niber, Jack Darog, and Eddie Gerrard on the Senators' forward line. For the series, Niber led in goals with six, while Foyston and Darog scored five. Benedict recorded a 2.20 goals against average GAA during the series. Pap Holmes recorded a 3.0 GAA. It was Holmes' fourth consecutive Stanley Cup Finals and his fifth to that point 1914-1917. Each senator received $390.19 in prize money, while each Metropolitan received $319.39. Stanley Cup Engraving The 1920 Stanley Cup was presented by the trophy's trustee William Farren. The Senators never did engrave their name on the cup for their championship season. It was not until the trophy was redesigned in 1948 that the words 1920 Ottawa Senators was put onto its then new collar. The following Senators, players, and staff were eligible to have their names engraved on the Stanley Cup. 19 1920 Ottawa Senators. Players 